Hello and welcome to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysick and today we recap the latest with varsity football, boys soccer, volleyball, and cross country as the fall sports season gets into full gear. Lake Orion Dragons varsity soccer team has opened up their season with a strong start as they would begin OAA white play against West Bloomfield on August 27th. The game took a bit to heat up as the first 15 minutes of the game seemed to be a back and forth affair as really no team could set up scoring opportunities. However, as soon as the pace picked up, the Dragons were able to get their opportunity. In transition, Joshua Foley would find Lyon Zornick who would score the only goal of the game for Lake Orion. West Bloomfield would create a couple of opportunities for themselves as well, but could never get in the net. In the second half, it would be even harder as Lake Orion would pick up their defensive effort. The Dragons really pressed the Lakers with their intensity, putting seven shots on goal in the first 20 minutes of the second half, while the Dragons didn't allow a shot on goal in the entire second half, leading to a one to nothing victory. The following two games for the Dragons would be against OAA Red Division teams, Rochester Adams and North Farmington. The Dragons were able to beat Adams 2-1 and would lose a close game to North Farmington 2-3, showing that the OAA is tough no matter what division you are in. On September 5th, the Dragons would host Oxford at home for an OAA white matchup between already rival schools. The game was close the entire way as Lake Orion would get out to an early lead with a goal from Keelan Poonia Morthy off a nice setup from the corner. It looked like Lake Orion was going to run away with it until late in the first half, Oxford would score off of a penalty kick with 20 seconds to go in the half. In the second half, Oxford would control a lot of the momentum, but Lake Orion's defense stepped up and didn't let a goal through. The Dragons would get a fantastic goal from Michael Boger, who sailed a ball from deep right through the hands of the Oxford goalkeeper. This would be the game-securing goal as Lake Orion would win 2-1 and move into first place in the OAA White. The Dragons would then follow up with a game against Avondale, who has str struggled early on in their White division games. They would battle Lake Orion till the end, but it was still not enough as Lake Orion would win the game 1-0. Lake Orion currently sits at 7-4 on the season. Coming off a state championship, the Lady Dragons varsity volleyball team began their season looking to come into the 2019 season with high hopes that they could make another run at a title. Right away, they would find themselves in some tough matchups as they would play three matches on August 27th. They would end up beating Clarkson two sets to none, as well as beating Notre Dame Prep in two sets to one. However, they would end up losing to Oxford in straight sets to end their day. The following week, on September 5th, the Dragons would have another tough set of matches as they would face off against the always state-ranked Stony Creek, as well as Mercy and Mount Morris. The Dragons would lose to both Stony Creek and Mercy in straight sets, but they would take the match against Mount Morris 2-0. On September 7th, the Dragons would travel to Oxford for a tournament where they would rattle off wins against Brandon, Seaholm, Rochester, and Plymouth Christian Academy, while not dropping a set to anyone. This would set them up for a finals matchup against the always tough Clarkson Wolves. Unfortunately, this time the Wolves would get their revenge from a couple weeks ago and beat Lake Orion 2-0. The Lady Dragons sit at 8-6 on the season as they will have one more tournament before league play begins on September 19th. Be sure to tune in to ONTV with more coverage. The Lake Orion boys and girls cross country teams started their season at the OAA Jamboree No. 1 in Troy. Here's Ian Locke with more. The 2019 cross country season got underway September 4th at Troy High School. The women's varsity team is in a transition year after losing two seniors from a year ago. The Lady Dragons All-State finisher from 2018, Sophie Novak, is back for her junior season, as are seniors Abby Locke and Marissa O'Leary. The Dragon men are led by 2018 All-Stater senior Andrew Nolan and a host of sophomores, all poised to move up the OAA Red standings. Jamboree number one of 2019 started under clear but humid conditions. The course was not ideal for fast times. Mud and soggy turf was the order of the day. Lady Dragons varsity 10 was led off the line by junior Sophie Novak, going head to head with Seaholm's junior star runner, Audrey Dadamio. The two all OA red runners broke free from the pack and were blistering the field at the two mile mark. The 
Damio would pull away and finish the 3.1 mile course in 18 minutes, 2.16 seconds. Novak was second overall for the Dragons. Hello senior Abby Locke was the only other top 20 finisher for the Lady Dragons, finishing 20th in 21-37. Troy would take the team win with 49 points. Clarkston, who won the 2018 state cross country title, put up an impressive second place finish with 59 points, even after the majority of their team graduated a year ago. Rochester Adams was third, Oxford fourth, Seaholm fifth, and Lake Orion was sixth. On the men's side, the Dragons senior Andrew Nolan picked up right where he left off last season. The All-Stater from 2018 challenged Clarkston's senior star Brendan Favaza right off the line. These two runners have had many battles over the past two years. On this day, Favaza would take the top individual spot with a 5K time of 15 minutes, 50.80 seconds. Nolan was just 12 seconds behind for a second place overall finish. The Dragons, as mentioned in the Open, are young, but have experience as many of the Varsity 10 are made up of sophomores, including Jacob Gleason's 16th, Adam Hayfley's 18th, Hong Bing Tang's 20th, and Clayton Kuyper's 23rd overall finishes. The Dragons would score a respectable 79 points for a fourth place team finish on the day. Clarkston, as expected, was dominant, taking four of the top seven places, scoring a neat best 28 points in the win. Adams scored 53 for second, Troy was fourth, Oxford fifth, and C. Holm was sixth. The Lady Dragons are working to get healthy and looking for a solid core varsity seven. Will there be an underclassman waiting in the wings for a breakout season? Will the Dragon men continue to develop into their potential? My guess would be yes to both questions. We'll have more highlights of the cross country season in future episodes. For the sports update, I'm Ian Locke. Thanks, Ian. The Lake Orion varsity football team began their season against Lapeer on August 29th. Early on, it was unclear what the Dragons would bring to the table in 2019 as Lapeer was the first to get on the scoreboard, scoring with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. However, early on in the second quarter, the Dragons would show that they, what they were made of. Kobe Manzo would get a handoff up the middle and break free for a 72-yard touchdown, tying the game at seven. Later on in the quarter, Cade Manzo would get an interception that would lead to a Connor Ross field goal from 39 yards out. Then finally, on their last possession of the half, Blaze Loward would connect with Sam Sterich for a 21-yard touchdown pass, giving the Dragons a 17-7 lead at the half. Lake Orion also proved how strong their defense was after giving up that touchdown. They didn't allow Lapeer to make any significant drives until late in the third quarter, where Lapeer made it all the way to the one-yard line for a second and one. But Lake Orion would stuff their attack on three straight plays, forcing a turnover on downs. Then, late in the third quarter, the game would be forced into an inclement weather delay that would push the end of the game to early Friday afternoon. Through all the adversity, the game would finish at the 17-7 score, as Lake Orion just never let up on defense. They made a strong statement in their opening week. In the following weeks, the Dragons would have a highly touted Southfield a and team come to town for Lake Orion's home opener, as well as a renewed rivalry with Rochester Adams. Joe Johnson has the stories. It was a great night for football as the Lake Orion Dragons hosted the Southfield a and Warriors at Dragon Stadium for the 2019 home opener. Both teams began the season with wins. Let's see who would walk away from this game 2-0. The Warriors' opening drive stalled, forcing a punt. The snap is high, and number 11, Mitch Howell, grabs the ball at midfield and returns it to the Warriors' 39-yard line. On the very next play, senior Blaze Lauer is in shotgun. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, tucks it away, and goes right up the middle, 39 yards into the end zone for the Dragons' first score of the day. The PAT was good, and the Dragons are on top early, 7-0. During the Warriors' next drive, facing a third and 10, quarterback Anthony Rompf is in the shotgun. He takes the snap, scrambles, and is sacked on his own 10 by the Dragons' Joe Cady. The Warriors line up to punt, but it's a fake. The punter streaks up the sideline for an apparent first down, but wait! The ref rules him out of bounds, just short of the first down marker. Are you kidding me? The Dragons take over on downs at the Warriors' 29-yard line. 
On second down, Lauer takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls right and goes the distance. Two possessions, two rushing scores by the Dragons quarterback, and Lake Orion takes a two touchdown lead over the Warriors with just over six minutes left in the first quarter. Following the kickoff, the Warriors begin their next drive on their own 26 yard line. Romp hands off to Ray Quinn Lee, who bobs and weaves, goes outside, and streaks down the sideline 74 yards into the end zone for an impressive touchdown run. And the Warriors finally put some points on the board to make it a game. The PAT was good. Lake Orion 14, Southfield AT 7, midway through the first. A 28 yard field goal by Connor Ross in the second quarter extended the Dragons' lead to 10. With the first half winding down, the Dragons once again have the ball. Facing a third and eight, Lauer hits Mitch Howell in stride, who is tackled on the 14-yard line. On the next play, Lauer drops back and launches a beautifully thrown ball right into the hands of Andrew Van Heck in the end zone. I mean, he put this thing in a bucket. Wow. The extra point was good, and the Dragons head into the locker room with a 24-7 halftime lead over the Warriors. Let's go to the start of the fourth quarter. The Dragons have the ball on the Warriors' 33-yard line. On first and 10, Kobe Manzo goes up the middle and sprints into the end zone to extend the Dragons' lead 31-7 over the Warriors. Desperately needing to put some points on the board, the Warriors are facing a second and four on the Dragons' 15. When the snap skips past Anthony Rump, he bats at the ball and Dragon Ashton Kroll picks it up on the hop and takes it the other way. He's taken down on the Warriors' 20-yard line. Now check out this run by Andrew Van Heck. He takes the handoff to the outside, cuts it back inside, bulldozes his way through defenders, but is stopped just short of the goal line. Wow. On the very next play, Lauer takes the snap and finds his way into the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the game. The extra point doinked off the upright, but the game would end with the Dragons impressively defeating the Warriors by a score of 37 to seven. We caught up with head coach John Blackstock after the game. You know, we, we talked all week about how everyone was gonna talk about this as us as an underdog and this is an upset. And uh, you know, we had a guest speaker come, uh, Mr. Burden, you know, the assistant principal and talk about, tell us the story of David and Goliath about how David really uh, didn't see himself as an underdog because he trained his whole life for it and made that connection with our kids that, uh, you know, we've been training for this for a long time. And uh, there was never a doubt in our kids' mind uh, that they would get this done. Now, I don't think anybody imagined we'd get it done in that fashion, uh, myself included. But that's, you know, sometimes how high school football goes where you just kind of get the ball rolling and the train just doesn't stop going down the hill. And they're, they're a talented team, man, they are. And they're going to win a lot of games. And I wouldn't be surprised if down the road, you know, we see them in the playoffs at some point, mm -hmm. hoping that we get there ourselves. But they, they're going to come back. They, they've got a lot of really great players. The Dragons record improves to 2-0 and as they now prepare to host Rochester Adams at Dragon Stadium on September 13th. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. The game between the 2-0 Lake Orion Dragons and the 2-0 Rochester Adams Highlanders scheduled for a Friday the 13th was postponed after a brief but severe thunderstorm knocked out power at Dragon Stadium. Kickoff was rescheduled to Saturday night. With 9.17 left in the first quarter, the Highlanders are facing a second down on their own 20 when running back Griffin Henke loses the handle on the ball. Dragon Ashton Crow comes up with it, giving Lake Orion possession on the Adams 25-yard line. On the next play, quarterback Blaze Lauer completes a pass to Andrew Van Heck, who takes it down to the Adams 4-yard line. On first and goal, Lauer pitches it to Van Heck, who gets a block from Kobe Manzo and goes into the end zone for Lake Orion's first touchdown of the game. The Ross PAT was good, and Lake Orion is on top 7-0. Let's go to the second quarter. The Highlanders put together a long sustained drive that started at their own nine yard line. Facing a fourth down on Lake Orient's two, quarterback Carter Ferris lunges into the end zone for the score, completing a 91 yard nine play drive. The PAT was good and the score is tied at seven apiece. Then with three and a half left in the first half, the Dragons are moving the ball. Lauer takes the snap and hands off to number 11, Mitch Howell, who streaks down the sideline and finds the end zone. 
The extra point was good, and Lake Orion regains the lead 14-7 with 3.13 left in the half. But before the half can come to an end, Adams once again finds themselves in the red zone threatening to score. Now this is where things get a little crazy. On first and 10 on Lake Orion 16, Ferris hands off to number 11, Nick Traficante, who is tackled on the five yard line. With the clock ticking, Adams is out of timeouts. On first down, Ferris keeps the ball, but is stopped just shy of the end zone by the Dragon D. Tick, 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 tick. On second down, Ferris hands off to Anthony Petrito, but he is stuffed at the line. Tick, 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 tick. On third down, Ferris tries to sneak it in again, but is stopped just short again. Then this happens. That clock's going still. That clock's going still. It's fourth down. Wyatt. Oh. What did they stop the clock for? Did he get in, yes or did. no? The Dragons no. are saying no. No signal. They didn't get in. And time has expired. And Touchdown now. Okay, which is it? They're calling touchdown. Incredibly, the Highlanders get what essentially is an extra timeout. The BAT ties the game at 14 apiece at the end of the first half. Now let's go to the third. Lake Orion has a first and 10 on Adams' 37-yard line. Blaze Lauer takes the snap, rolls right, and launches a perfectly thrown ball into the hands of Mitch Howell in the end zone. The Dragons regain the lead, 21-14 with 9.51 left in the third. The Highlanders close the gap on Derek Larson's field goal to make the score 21-17. The teams line up for the kickoff, and Sinai Palo makes an ill-advised decision to field the kick inside his own five-yard line. He muffs it, picks it up, and makes a cut at the 15 to turn on the Jets and outrun his pursuers. He goes all the way in for the score, stunning the visiting Highlander. The PAT was no good, and the score is now 27-17 with 3-10 left in the third. But Adams answers immediately with the ball on their own 29, Ferris is in shotgun. He fakes the handoff and hits a streaking number 20, freshman Parker Picot, who goes the distance for a 71-yard touchdown reception. The Highlanders pulled it within three points, 27-24. Let's go to the fourth quarter with Lake Orion driving. On second down on the Adams 36-yard line, Lauer hands off to Manzo, and look at this effort. Manzo is finally tackled on the 20-yard line. On second and 10, Manzo takes the ball down to the seven yard line for a first and goal. A pass interference call on the Adams defense places the ball on the three. Bauer takes the snap, pitches to Van Heck, who takes it outside, makes a cut, and finds the end zone for the score. Ross misses his second PAT of the night, but the Dragons cling on to the lead 33 to 24. Later in the fourth, the Dragons tack on a Ross field goal to extend the lead to 12 points with 5.30 left in the game. Now following the field goal, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Adams has the Dragons kicking from the Adams 45. They pull a surprise onside kick, but the refs determine that the ball didn't go the required 10 yards, and Adams begins their drive on their own 36. Dragons coaching staff gets called for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and the ball is moved to the Lake Orion 49. On second down and 10, Ferris's pass falls incomplete, but the refs throw a flag. A defensive pass interference call places the ball on the Dragons 34. Ferris completes a pass to Petrito, who is tackled on the 30. And on the next play, Ferris's pass sails out of bounds, but there is another flag. Pass interference on the Dragons. The ball is placed on the Dragons' 19-yard line with 4.29 left in the game. On the next play, another flag, but this time it's a chop block on the Highlanders, moving the ball back to the 36. On first and 32, Traficante takes the handoff to the Dragons' 24. Then on the next play, another flag, roughing the passer, which gives Adams a first and goal with 3.30 left. 
Ferris throws an incomplete pass, but there's another flag. Finally, Anthony Petrito finds the end zone to make the score 36-31 with 3.22 left, but that's how the game would end. We caught up with Coach Blackstock after the game. It was wild from the start to the finish, right? Yeah. Um, you know, even starting with, with yesterday and the delay because of the power outage, it just, it's, it's been kind of a wild weekend. Um, your quarterback played well. Your defense had their first really big test this year. They yeah. played two good teams, but they really were tested tonight. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think everybody understands and realizes that the offense that they run, that Veer offense, really poses some problems, especially when they're really the only ones that run it to the degree that they do, and it's hard to replicate in practice throughout the week. You know, our guys did the best they could, but man, they just, they run that thing with such timing and precision and, and speed that uh, for, for our defense, we, we don't want to give up 31, but man, they, they did, came through and made some plays when they had to and uh, helped us get that victory, which was huge. The undefeated Dragons move on to face their crosstown rivals, the one and two Oxford Wildcats, on Friday, September 20th, in the battle for the double O trophy. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV Sports. Thanks, Joe. And that's it for this episode of Lake Orion Sports Update. For even more Lake Orion Sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage of football, soccer, volleyball, and more. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. We'll see you next time.